shuffling papers. To admit him back in. Matt's here. Uh -huh. Matt's, he just walked off his screen. Yeah. There he is. He changed. I think he changed. Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, you see those uh, YouTube videos where whole groups are singing songs. I don't. I don't think we're ready for that. No, I would say not. <laughs> all right, so we will do roll call. Director Gentilini. Here. Director Schoberg. Here. Director Yuhan. Here. Director Sather. Here. Director Lodiger. Here. Director Sorkin. Here. And myself, Director Eddie, are present. Did I miss anybody? Okay, we are all present. Okay, 4.0, agenda, additions, and deletions. Is there any? Mr. Chair, I'd like to delete 11.4. We already had that discussion. Like 10 okay. minutes ago. Just 11.4? Yes. Okay, all righty. I'd like to add something to the agenda, maybe a quick conversation. You wrote Mary Uchi today about um, uh, a request for some additional equipment. And he said he could get himself a mic there and explain to you what he's looking at. Maybe just to hear about it this meeting and then maybe to put it on the, another meeting. So you want to, re, you, you you would just want, want to put 11.4, want to just replace 11.4 with the discussion about Hugo? However, okay. Okay, all right. Okay. All righty. Uh, 5.0, visitor input. Nope. You know what, I wanted to talk about that too, Bill, because we do still have it on our agenda, but and we do have the capabilities for the mm -hmm. public to give visitor input, and I think I know Virginia does that, but they have it at the end of their meeting. So I would you know, like to accommodate the visitor input part of our agenda because we can. Jeff, how do we take care of that? How do we get visitor input uh, through this telepresence? Um, there's a couple ways. I mean, we could put Deb's email. Deb can monitor email during the broadcast, and people can send her questions. Probably be the easiest way. Okay. That's one way, or we could let them zoom in. That's not really recommended. You can. Next best thing to do. I mean, you can, but it's not recommended. I mean, is any is everybody here is all zoomed in through the school district iPad, right? I take it. No, uh, not necessarily. No, I use a PC myself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but but I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the issue about the Zoom meetings is, um you can't control necessarily the the video and the mute no you you can control so, yeah. you can control okay, the, yeah. the mute the host uh, the host can yes correct yeah okay mm -hmm. so if someone wants to zoom in on visitor input 
Jeff, how would that work? They would, I mean, don't you have to send them an invite? They would need the link, but you can't control, the problem is, is you can't control what they show on their video. I mean, we could, the best way is what I, what I explained to you. Just have me email the question into Deb. What if they want to make a comment? Like it, when somebody stands up at the mic under visitor input, they want to make a statement or a comment to the board. I, I, I don't see any problem with, I don't care what they're going to say, you know, that they can zoom in and we could, it's no different than if they were standing in front of the podium. No, we can talk about that, Bill, later. Then yeah, I mean, I'm moving. trying to figure out. For the sake of security, I mean, if you're having people zoom in on their personal computers, I think that might be some sort of breach of, you know, I mean, you're probably, you mean, a breach of security into the school district, you know. I don't, no, zoom I don't, I don't think so. No. I don't think that's the issue. It's whether or not people are appropriate. Right. Uh, but Bill and Jeff, you can talk we'll, about we'll that. We'll figure that out, Bill. Let's keep her rolling. Sorry. All right. Okay, we'll keep her rolling here. Uh, approve the, how, the agenda. Are we, wait, now, are we agreeing that we are going to have this event input and then they're just going to figure out how to do it? Uh, me and Jeff will talk to figure out the best practice. Okay. By means of try to work on a video link or we'll, we'll, or bring it, or we'll try to get maybe a study session. We'll, we'll talk, you know, talk about it a little bit more. I think yeah, that would I, yeah, I'm in support of figuring out how to be able to do visitor input, but, but yeah, with, with this, these weird confines. Yeah. Right. What, so well, Jeff, I, we as long as we're dragging this out, I mean, I'm working on purchasing Zoom Pro and what Zoom Pro will allow me to do is it'll give people a toll-free number to call into the conference rather than, so they're watching it on TV, so we don't have video issues with them they can but they could actually call in and comment but either way I'll, I'll talk with bill about that you and bill can get that figured out yep. though right so we that will. can get it posted correctly if it's posted or whatever you two can figure that out yep right that might be part of a conversation with hugo later too from what i understand okay okay are we good yep good okay 6.0 move the agenda um, we have to do this through roll call. Uh, so I get a motion to approve the agenda. Um, oh. There's move. I move. It's a move. Move by John. Yes. And second by. Support. Support by Sather. Uh, Kelly, can I get a roll call vote here? Director Johan. Yes. Director Schoberg. Yes. Director Lodiger. Yes. Myself, Director Sather is a yes. Director Addy. Yes. Director Sorkin. Yes. And Director Benalini. Yes. That vote passes to approve the agenda. Okay. A seven point oh, approve the treasurer's report. On your packets, you have a disbursement for the month of um, April. Uh, total disbursements totaling five hundred seventy-seven thousand eight hundred seventy-three dollars and fifty-six cents. That's it. That's okay. all I. Sign my pack. Okay. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Treasurer's report. Walker will make the motion. Treasurer's report. Okay. Um, we'll make the motion to approve the treasurer's report. I will second it. Any discussion? Any discussion? Treasurer's report? Can I, Kelly, can I get a roll call vote? Yes. Director Schober. Yes. Director Yes. Myself, Director Sather is a yes. Director Abby. Yes. 
Director Sorkin? Yes. Director Jenna? Yes. And Director Yuhan? Yes. Treasurer's report is approved. 8.0 consent, uh, consent agenda. Approve the minutes of the regular meeting on Monday, April 13th, 2020. Can I get a motion to approve that? The, I will move to approve the consent agenda. Second. I get second. a second. I'll second. Seconded by Director Gentilini. Any discussion? Okay. It's being none, no discussion. Kelly, can I get a roll call vote, please? Director Lodiger. Yes. Myself, Director Say there's a yes. Director Addy. Yes. Director Sorkin. Yes. Director Gentilini. Yes. Director Johan. Yes. And Director Tober. Yes. The consent agenda is approved. All right, 9.0, items removed from the consent agenda, which there were none. 11.0, personnel, 11.1, .1, there is none. 11.0, new business, approved plans for digitizing cumulative records. Mr. Chair, we uh, talked about this for two meetings now, and I rearranged that um, draft into a, into a plan. If the board has any questions, you can certainly try to answer those now, or I would recommend that we go ahead and start moving on this. We do have the uh, labor force to get this done for the rest of the year, so it's a good time to do it. Okay, so then we're going to digitize all this stuff, and then uh, and what happens to all the old paper records? Shred it. Okay. 11.1 .1, approve the plan. Can I get a motion to approve the plans for digitizing cumulative records? I'll move. Director Yuhan. Director Yuhan. Support. Director Otiger, support. Any discussion? I have a couple of questions and comments. Um, first of all, have we, under this part where it talks about special ed, have we checked with our special ed co op to see if, you know, Compliance about special ed records because I know sometimes we can be different than regular educational records. Yes, that's what they recommend. We talked with the service co-op. Mm -hmm. We talked with the service co-op about about this. Um, is this policy or this document? Jeff. What? <laughs> I'm just asking if you consulted with the um, special ed co-op people about what we're about to pass here. Yes. On special ed record. Okay. Okay. Another question is, I know that um, governmental entities have to have uh, records retention policies and records retention schedule. And is that something that goes along with this? Because once we digitize about actually destroying and getting permission for a schedule, there's more to this than just this policy. Well, the the records retention doesn't doesn't change. It's just the format in which you can read them. Okay, so do we have a record records retention schedule? Can you hear Jeff? No, I, I, I hear the question. I'm trying to think of the best way to get that information to her, like right now. Because I believe statute says we have to have a schedule, and that schedule has to be approved by some state department before we go ahead and do anything. Well, and like I said, it it doesn't change the schedule at all. It's just changing the format in which our documents are in. <laughs> Do we, yeah, do we have a schedule? Do we have a... Uh, all I'm saying is... No, I, I, I know what you're saying, and I, I'm not avoiding you here. I'm trying to look for just, it, and I don't have it handy. Yeah, let's just check into it. Yeah. 
Okay. It goes hand in hand with this. It's, this is not a standalone thing we're passing, okay? Right. No, it's, okay. I get it. Thanks. By the time we so come we to the next meeting, I'll, I'll have that for you. Okay, we're we're not going to start ripping things up tomorrow anyway. So we got a motion by Director Yuhan, second by Director Lodiger. Any more discussion on 11.1? .1? Director Shader, can I get a roll call vote, please? Yes. Uh, myself, Director Sather, is a yes. Director Addy? Yes. Director Sorkin? Yes. Director Genolini? Yes. Director Yuhan? Yes. Director Schulberg? Yes. And Director Lodiger? Yes. 12.1 uh, is approved. 11.1. Or sorry, 11.1. Uh, 11.2, consider funding request. Uh, Mr. Chair, we did have a request from a parent group that is trying to do well by our seniors. Um, hopefully you can see that funding request. Let me see if I can put it up on the table here. But anyway, they are looking to... Uh, buy banners to put on the light posts in, in both towns honoring honoring our seniors and total cost they're figuring on that is five thousand and are asking the school and the cities to for some funding to help that process along I know that we do we do obviously have a budget for graduation ourselves and we're not entirely sure what that's going to look like at this moment, we're going to have that conversation in a little bit. Um, so we may, it may <clears throat> I don't know. Angie, do you know how much we normally spend on graduation? I do not have a total for how much we spend. I know we buy the flowers and with the programming, um, but I'm not, sh we buy the gowns and caps for the students as well, but I don't have a total budget. Okay. Do you rent the stage then, Jeff? No. It's, Do you rent the stage? We, we have that stage here. Okay. All right. So what are they, they're asking, they're asking for a, a donation, Jeff. I do believe a $5,000. No, we can't. That's it's not a, we can't call it a donation. The school can't necessarily donate stuff. We're, okay. they're looking for us to contribute they're they're trying to buy five thousand dollars worth of banners. They're asking us. They're asking okay. the city of Gil Gilbert and the city of Eveleth. And what I, yeah, I guess we hadn't put that one under. But and I guess what I'm asking you is if we are okay. In what amount? Well, I would say that it's it's a unusual circumstance, of course. But um, when you talked about the. Um, the uh, flowers and the programs and i would say what we usually spend on graduation at least that amount in our, we should you know use use for this situation but we have to be careful about the public purpose policy and like you said jeff we can't actually donate unless it meets the public pur purpose um, right. definition and and it is um, being spent on our seniors we would normally have a graduation ceremony so i mean it there is, right. there is some justification there. It's just... It's just the amount, you know. And it's, the hope would be that there would be some sort of graduation, you know, where maybe they still do get flowers, um, you know, and they still can wear their caps and gowns and things. But the group is, is looking to purchase banners, um, you know, if we ended up having, say, a parade or something go down the main street of those seniors, you know, to recognize them with social distancing in mind, it would be nice to have banners that showed their faces because when they're in cars, they may not be seen so well. But, you know, there, this group is talking about multiple things and the banners right now is the majority of what the conversation is about. But there's conversation about, um, you know, 
giving suggestions to the school district on on different options for graduation. <clears throat> so I think what this group is essentially asking from the school board is a thousand dollars to contribute towards that towards the banners to recognize them in a way that we can't with a traditional graduation. If I could make one suggestion as far as how that goes, regardless of what the board decides, um, I would recommend that the school actually purchase those banners. We accept if there's other entities that are contributing funds to that, that they donate that to the school and the school actually purchase those banners. And that's, that's doable. Do we know, well, I'm just, yeah, I mean, yeah, Jeff, I mean, I feel that we should just give the max amount, or not give, but we should consider the max amount to purchase these in one, you know, in one, in one lump sum, and then, like Jeff said, the, any money given would be donated back to the school. Because I'm sure that... I would imagine, we, hmm? the, I would imagine, Brandy, you guys got, kind of got to get moving on this relatively absolutely. soon. Huh? Yep, yeah, absolutely, because I am, I am part of... The group because I do have a graduating senior but um, yes there is a time frame on this we've already started asking um, the seniors for pictures you know they have to be a high resolution they have to be 300 dpi so we have to make sure that those pictures coming in are at that so when they're put on the banners they don't get blurry and the actual printing of those banners is going to take about two weeks but there is um, you know, we have to make sure all the brackets are on the light posts and those kinds of things beforehand. So there's definitely a deadline. Um, there are some, there is a Minnesota Power has uh, said that they would help both the city of Gilbert and the city of Evelyn put them up to, tr to try and help us make sure that they're. And we lost her. We lost everybody. Nope. Yeah. Right. Can you and hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear everything I said? Yes. Okay. okay. So there's a lot of people that want to step up and help the seniors. And there's there's a group that has a GoFundMe page, and that's, that's strictly for all-night grad party stuff. And then this parent group is working on things like the banners and coming up with possible, you know, suggestions for the school to consider for graduation things and um, you know, just trying to think outside the box and how we can honor them in a non-traditional way. And these banners is one of those ways. Okay. So I'll just make a motion that we we make the don't or, or we give the 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 max the max request that we can on this to get the ball rolling. And we can't, asking, give, we can't give them money. What I what I'm we suggesting, Mr. Chair, is that the school board. No. Purchase these banners and have donations to the school yes. to reimburse some of those costs. So the funding request would be so. So I, I think if I'm hearing right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, we lost her. Oh. Mediacom isn't working good in Fail Township today. Obviously not. Kelly? The good part of town, it's working fine. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Red oh, District. She's there. Oh, she's there. Oh, there you are. Hey, she's back. Yeah. Hey, go ahead, Kelly. Talk. We didn't we hear, hear you anything you said. Okay, sorry. It's, it's getting really broken, so I stopped saying anything. Get your kids um, off for So, my understanding is we will put. 5,000 to... Oh. You're freezing up again. Just seen these vendors. Any acceptance from the pro. We couldn't hear anything you said again. But just so you guys know, you know, we're looking at... For the cost of these banners, what it's going to end up costing, um, you know, for everything that we're hoping to do with the banners, it's we're thinking 
a seven thousand dollar mark is a good goal okay. for these banners. And the, the letter says five thousand. We've been talking more about it and about the size of the banners. And so seven thousand is what is what we have set as a goal for for banners. We have sent out these letters to the city of Evelyn, city of Gilbert, um, the township of Fail, and Fail has donated to the cause. And there's other donations that we are getting as well. But what the what the letter to the school board is regarding is a thousand dollars. I don't. And from what I'm hearing from Jeff and from Polly, is the school district can't donate money, but what Jeff is suggesting is that once we do raise the money that we have a, give that as a donation to the school district so the school district can do the purchase. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, Jeff, wouldn't you like just to get the ball rolling as soon as possible, the school district would just purchase this graduation stuff because we're not having a graduation. So can we just get the get these banners going? That would be my and, my suggestion. Would be for the school district to purchase them and then have whatever organization it is that is collecting those donations donate to the school to reimburse some of those costs. Correct. So I I don't want to complicate things, but um, say say it costs ten thousand dollars and we you know we pay for it. It's a graduation activity and only two thousand comes into donations. So does that mean the is going to the balance there, the $8,000? Well, and, and I get your point. I, I certainly get your point, but the, the board is just going to have to decide if that's something that you want to do or not. So, And there is a risk to it, obviously. I look at it, you haven't had the lights on in the school, you haven't had the heat turned up, you're saving money. I guess, you know, I think the school should. This is a unique situation. It is. It is. Hey, Brian, you know we got a plan to put the brackets and the banners up. Do we have a plan to take them down after they've been honored appropriately? Well, dependent upon who pays for the brackets, for instance, if, if the city, if either city or both cities, Gilbert or Aveleth, decide that they're going to pay for the brackets, then they'd be they they'd be their brackets, and they could use them for, you know, signs in the future that say "Welcome to Gilbert" or "Welcome to Aveleth" or you know. So if they if they purchase that, um, and what we're waiting on to get them numbers is we need to find out how many kids are actually going to get us pictures. If it's going to be all 70 or if it's going to be 46, we need to know how many. And then we'd get back to each city, tell them, you know, how many how many banners we, we intend to hang because we'd like to do half in Gilbert and half in Eveleth. And then once we tell them how much, you know, how many we are going to hang up, they will look at how many brackets they need and they'd be able to guesstimate um, a dollar amount for themselves if they were to donate those brackets. It's not 100% positive that either city would would purchase those brackets, but it is a discussion right now in the city of Evelyn. Um, so it just that depends helps. on... You know, so they're not up two years from now, faded and looking, if it is. is there a plan to take them down after uh, June or July or whatever they, I guess whenever you're thinking. Well, just so you know, there are some brackets on poles already in both towns. Do that. Yeah, um, do that. Yeah, so they they typically are up there anyways. Um, I was talking about the, the, the banner themselves, not the banners. Oh, the banners. The banners would be taken down uh, probably after the after July for sure. Um, oh, okay. But those banners would be then given, the thought is the banners would then be given to that student. Do we actually have a... Uh... <coughs> A place to anchor these uh, brackets to? I mean, the light oh, they have to withstand wind and uh, too, you know. Right? The light posts in town. They are light posts, okay. Yeah. And, they, and a lot of towns do already have the light posts and the brackets for hanging signs that say welcome to Gilbert or welcome to Eveleth or. So there are, you know, some school or some towns already have those. But just so the board. Well, 
Sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. Just so the board understands, I'm I'm not recommending that you purchase brackets. I'm just recommending that you purchase the banners. Okay, so so on that, Jeff, I would just say if the group you could work, Jeff, if you could work with that group to get this done in a timely manner, you know, to do what you have to do uh, collectively with that group to get these banners. I, I feel I'm getting the feeling that everybody wants to do this, and I I'm in total agreement agreement that that we can go ahead and just like I said Brandy work with Jeff or the whoever's the part of that group work with Jeff to get this done in a timely manner and and Jeff I don't know if you want to be that go-to person or if Angie would want to be that go-to person um, that would actually be Angie far as details on what uh, okay. what you guys need because we've already kind of been in contact with Angie about different things, so it just seems like that would be the best fit. Yep. Okay. But I want to. I want to be clear. If the board decides on this, are are you looking for the group then? Whatever donations they receive to donate back to the school. I need clarification on that to make sure that. Well, not any donation. Donations meant for this project. The banners, yeah. right? For the banners. Well, I think we're talking two separate bills there because that five thousand dollars was banners and brackets combined, correct? You're on mute. You're right Sorry. Um, so the the dollar amount that we were specifying, we were looking at just the banners because. We saw the brackets and the posts on many of the polls already, just not all of them in Eveleth. Um, so the dollar amount we were looking at per sign, and this was for like a 30 by 78 inch banner, they were about $80. But since then, we've, we've figured out we're going to most likely go shorter, just based on what the cities already have. And so that would probably be about fifty dollars a banner. We've got seventy kids. So thirty-five hundred bucks we'd be on the hook for for the school. Potentially, <clears throat> if we go fifty dollars, if they're fifty dollars per banner. So on that, can I get a motion to approve this funding request? You there? You're not looking for a dollar amount, though. Correct? No, 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 not a dollar amount. We don't know what that dollar amount is. I'll make a motion that the school buys the banners, and if there's extra, I don't know this is getting, getting get kind of wordy, but if there's extra money left over from the bracket donation that it comes to the school, to help recoup the cost of the banners. If that makes okay. sense. So we got a motion by Director Yuhan. I'll second that. And now. Any more discussion on that? Well, again, we've we've also asked the city of Eveleth and the city of Gilbert if they would make a donation. Gilbert is coming. I, I haven't talked to him yet, but we talked today to the city of Eveleth about asking them to make a donation for the brackets, and then they would keep those brackets. The city would keep the brackets if they pay for them as their contribution to the situation. So... If they buy them, it's they're theirs. Well, I don't think it would be real prudent for the school to buy brackets that hang on city right. lampposts. So, so we're we're better just, off just buying the banners, and, yes. and call it a day. And yep. they'd be they'd be somewhere between if they end up being fifty dollars because we changed the size. I haven't gotten a quote on the on the price for the new size, but it's going to be less than eighty dollars. So. I'm just throwing out the $50 figure at 70 a piece. That's what, $3,500? So I would say it would be anywhere between $3,500 and $4,500 for banners. Okay. Oh, what should you say? Let's just buy the banners. Right. Okay. I would and like to, I have to make an amendment to that motion unless somebody wants to change it. That I think we need to check with the public purpose, uh, the public purpose definition. And then, and then, I'm not against doing anything, 
but I just, it, it needs to comply. Even the cities, the cities can't donate either. We're all public entities and they just can't donate. They might want to buy the brackets and blah, 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 and get reimbursed for them too. But I just, I want to make sure legally it, it adheres to the um, public purpose principle. Okay, Jeff, can I just make a recommendation? You take a portion of the grad, the money that would have been spent on the graduation and buy the banners versus, okay. you mean, you could, buy, you could buy flowers and gowns and caps I think I mean, the I think the purpose again is there's not a traditional ceremony that's likely going to happen with you know with social distancing they're not going to be able to walk the stage like they traditionally have and those types of things so hanging the banners is showing those kids you know they're, it's recognizing those kids for their academic right. achievement so it's kind of like walking across the stage and honoring them this is the way they'd be honored is through the or recognized is through these banners and potentially you know there'd be a parade could be a parade going through town and they'd be in their cars and social distancing and everything and you'd be able to see the pictures of those kids that are riding there through town brandy i i totally totally support the con concept totally okay they're being gypped i hate to use that word what's the other word out of a traditional graduation I totally sympathize. I just want to make sure you do it right. That's all. Le you know, legally and financially, we have to count for that as far as our audit goes and everything, you know. But I don't, I mean, uh, I however, would. However, we can do it, I'm in favor of it. But I don't, I don't feel it, I don't feel at all that it would be any sort of misappropriation of school money for purpose. I mean, we are using it for a purpose. We're not, it's for a purpose during this, you know. And that's what the purpose is. But Bill, you might not understand though that there's 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 legal language about public purpose expenditures, and so that's all I'm saying. I mean, yeah. let's do it. Let's get it done. But let's it's, just it's get for kids. It's for kids. <clears throat> if you had the brackets in there, it might right. be questionable. But the banners for kids, I don't and, think you're, there's a problem there. And and don't worry about the brackets. We've, we'll figure that, that out. out. The parent group will figure that out. Right. If the board. It, if the board is willing to do the banners as recognition for their academic achievement in, you know, potentially in, in replacement of a traditional grad ceremony where they walk across the stage, that would be excellent. Okay. So we got a motion by director and on support by director Sather, I do believe. Director Addy. Oh, where are you? <laughs> what? I my my internet connection is great so that's so sometimes oh I just, you're back okay, you were the so, support on that huh i was yeah well how can i, I, I put exactly. a test on it okay i support it okay all right that was just <laughs> all right, i tried to write it down and i put an s on it s a okay so with you being back kelly can i get a roll call vote please? and i have amendments that doesn't have a second yet what is it I told you, the amendment is that we check into it, that it meets the public purpose expended, legal public purpose expenditure. Okay. That's all. Okay, so, okay, it so, would be a quick phone call to somebody, that's all. Okay, so Jeff, so we'll, we'll amend this funding request to look into the, the this expenditure legality or whatever, however you want to work fine. I, I wouldn't buy them if it was illegal anyway, so I'll, we'll, we'll right. call before we buy them. Right. We gotta we gotta code it right and everything. Okay. Yep. Uh, and again, like Jeff just said, he he's not gonna order it if there's anything wrong with ordering it. I'll call, I mean, I'll call Spencer in the morning and he can check in on that. Okay. With that being amended to look into the legality of the expense of the funding request, can I get a roll call vote, please? Yes, uh, director. Uh, we need a we need a second. And oh, you need the, a second for that I'll in order to. I'll support on that one. Okay, so for the amendment, it's it's for the amendment. It's so what you're voting on. What you're voting on, sorry, Bill. What you are voting on is to hmm? is right. to not approve it and to have the superintendent look into if we can no. do it no that's not it again no no to prove it pending the 
call. Again, first you vote on the amendment, and then you vote on the main motion. It's not, <laughs> it's not complicated. I mean, yeah, all right. So, the, yes, so can, I get a mo can I get a motion on Polly's amendment to look into the legal part of this? Kelly well, already did. Polly so okay. made the motion, and I seconded. My understanding. Okay. One sec, I just want to be clear on what we're voting on. So my understanding on Polly's amendment was not to not approve the request, is to approve this with the understanding that we will first seek guidance to make sure that it is in compliance with with our um again again the again the, the public purpose. Again the procedure is and Margaret Skelton verified it at the last meeting because nobody believed me that you vote on the amendment first and then you vote on the main motion. So if that amendment passes, then we vote on the main motion that includes that amendment and we do it. That's all. It's simple as I know. I, I don't think that's the issue, Polly. I think there, we're just wanting clarity to make sure we understand the amendment request. Right. And then right. It, then the, the, it will pass with that amendment. The main motion will pass with that amendment. And definitely. Can you clarify the request one more time, though, please? Just that we check, uh, uh, we check that it meets the public purpose um, doctrine for expenditures. It's a legal, it's a legal definition, and like Jeff said, it's it's going to be just a matter of a phone call. But yeah. Me too. Okay. All right. So the amendment, we got to we got to vote on the amendment. Hey, can I get a roll call vote on the amendment, please? Yes, um, Director Addy. Yes. Director Sorkin. Yes. Director. Director who? Genelini. Yes. And Director Yuhan. Yes. Director Schoberg. No. Director Lodiger. No. You don't and want it to be legal. Direct, Director Sather's yes. The amended motion passes. Okay. And so that vote is not to say we don't want it to be legal. To me, it goes understood that Jeff will make sure that it's a legal expenditure before we make it, especially after the discussion. I think an amendment was ridiculous. That's your I opinion. Agree. I agree. I think it was made to be way too technical. Okay, so on that, with the amendment passing, we got a motion by Director Yuhan, support by Director Addy on the original 11.2 funding request to move forward. Okay, any discussion on that? Uh, one more point of order is that, you know, you talk about the code of ethics. And the Code of Ethics for board members also says not to speak disparagingly about uh, a fellow board member, either on the board or a previous board member. And uh, I take those insults as very much talking disparaging about me and my suggestion to follow the law, whatever. And, oh, you know, you can you gotta follow the whole co Code of Ethics, not just some of it. So. Okay, that being I stand by my comments. I was speaking about the amendment, not about you. And okay, I made that it was ridiculous. Okay. Let's get over this. Point, Let's vote. Point made. Okay. Uh, Kelly, can I get a roll call vote, please? Yes. Director Sorkin. Yes. Director Genelini. Yes. Director Yuhan. Yes. Director Schoberg. Yes. Director Ladiger. Randy. Yes. Dur uh, myself, Director Sate, there's a yes. Director Addy. Yes. That 12.2 um, passes. And just so okay. you guys know, I know the enclosure says 11.2, but it is under 12.2 for new business, so I'm going to stick with that for my documentation purposes. Okay. So we have 11.1, .1, update on distance learning. Uh, Mr. Chair, just I'll be I'll be brief on this one. We just I just want to talk about uh, obviously you've heard by now the governor closed school for the rest of the school year. Um, 
we and and May 1st and May 4th has been declared teacher planning time for the rest of the year so we will uh, not have classes on the first or the fourth uh, we will be working on planning out the rest of the year we've already started planning out the rest of the year now that we know for sure what's going to happen obviously there's questions up in the air like grading and and uh, getting materials back and all that good stuff so we we, we have started planning that uh, we'll, we'll by the end of the week we'll have a grading recommendation out for various grade levels as far as how we're going to handle that um, we're also looking at uh, how we're going to get through some of the end of the year award ceremonies um, what we might do for that um, and we don't have answers yet but by the end of the week we'll, we'll have all this stuff clear and and then as far as uh, end of the year stuff we're looking at uh, trying to do some type of um, that last week which is May 26, 27, 28 those are the last three official student contact days um, we're probably going to be done with actual classes the Friday before like we are with the seniors and we're going to spend those three days trying to collect all of our materials we have lots of stuff that went home um, we'll spend more than likely we'll do the first day we'll have the option of drop off and and then the 27th and 28th we're actually going to do bus routes and try to go get that stuff and then we have to clean it all and put it away and so that's likely what's going to happen so we likely have four more weeks of of classes this way and uh it's going as well as it can at this time i mean elementary has gone uh probably better than than secondary uh, they're making daily contact through through Zoom, um, and it's been real successful, particularly in elementary. Uh, kids like to be able to see their teachers and interact with their classmates, and that's been real successful. Um, Secondary has been fine. I mean, they they do a lot of Schoology, which they're used to, um, not so much of the direct contact because of, just because of the nature of a high school <coughs> schedule, it's almost impossible and, and lining up schedules and whatnot. So. But there is once a week all of our high school kids do connect with their classmates and their teacher in, in all their classes. So I, I when I when I sit in these uh, statewide conferences with other superintendents and I listen to what's going on around the state, I, I think Eva Gilbert is doing very well distance learning wise. I mean, uh, it's an extremely difficult situation, and, and our teachers have risen to the occasion and and done an incredible job. So that's all I have, Mr. Chair. And I'll just, yeah, I'll just, yeah, you guys are doing a knockout job. I just take my hats off, hat my head off to you guys for doing a good job. So, all right. Uh, and you, uh, you're talking about looking into maybe a ceremony, graduation ceremony. You're looking into maybe something like a virtual telepresence uh, ceremony? Uh, uh, Polly, that'd be, I think we're going to have that discussion at 11.5. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. We've, 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 yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. okay. okay so uh, 11 point, 11 point 4. I'm going to move my thing over to you so he can talk to you. Okay. 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 All right, Hugo, they want to talk about your uh, equipment request. Oh. Yeah. Um, Just speak, uh, that's fine. <clears throat> um, what is happening is that the uh, Channel 12 equipment is at nearing its end of life, what they call end of life. Uh, we have to upgrade uh, some of it. And <clears throat> the main one that we have to update is uh, the server, which uh, uh, allows us to do uh, two outputs. One is channel 12. The other one is the in-house channel here in the school. And uh, in upgrading, here we have two choices. Unfortunately, Channel 12 can't afford uh, to buy the more expensive one. That's the one that has two output channels. It records and allows storage and archiving. Um, the version that we can afford uh, to purchase is about $19,000. And uh, the one that has the two output channels uh, is 30000 
Uh, yes, what we're requesting is if uh, the school would like to keep the in-house channel, uh, the only way we can do that is to go to the, to the higher priced one. Uh, so we're asking if uh, the school would help to donate, for, uh, or not donate, but purchase the other half. <laughs> yes. Uh, make the difference up from the 18 to the 30. Um, the in-house channel here, uh, I'm sure you've seen it in the school, uh, it's used for pulling up bulletins. Uh, you can put just about any information you want on there. And it's seen on, in the school here, and I believe it's in Gilbert too, because it comes back through a media com. It also goes through uh, channel 12 on public access and on the internet. Um, and it's really a good way for the school to give out information about what's going on during the day, um, activities, uh, meals, what's for meals. Uh, I've had a lot of input from people that say they like it. We play it for about two hours every morning on uh, Channel 12, and I've heard a lot of parents say that they like the idea of seeing kind of what's going on in, in the school. And, uh, you know, we would like for you to uh, help, out, help us out and, um, you know, put some money towards the, the larger, the, the better unit, which will allow the two channels. How much is how much is equipment going to be owned? Then who's going to own it? Pardon? If we donate it, are we half owners of it, or because I mean, we just had this conversation at eleven point two about a funding request, and would it be a misappropriation of public money to donate to a private entity? It's yours. We wouldn't be able to it's donate. We, they're asking us to purchase the equipment. It's not not a private entity. It's Channel Twelve. It's, it's a public and public. It's a non-profit public entity, okay. and the, the school is part of that. You are. Dale Township and then the city of Elmer. We used to have the city of Gilbert, and but we no longer do. And, uh, this is this is uh, the equipment that the school uses already. It's the bulletin board. You can have activities, and um, you could you could actually utilize it more than we do already. But it's all for information for students, parents. It can be live. I, I, I only know this because Hugh and I had a conversation earlier today when he explained it to me. There's much more capability for the school, and so it is a school, um, school, you know, school, school use equipment. Mr. Chair, if I can make a recommendation, um, I would take this tonight as, as information, and I, exactly. I would like to go back to uh, my staff and, and discuss where we're headed with this. I mean, obviously we're moving into a new school in a couple of years and I don't, I don't know how all that's going to work. So, but I want to get my tech okay. guys involved and, and by the time the, uh, our first May meeting, we'll have some type of recommendation for you. Okay. Yeah, that was the on the, on the agenda to talk um, about it. To throw it in tech. But I think uh, Hugo should be part of this, uh, the tech, the future tech discussions uh, too. Um, internet and you guys can put any kind of information you want anytime. Okay. Any other questions okay. on that? And so could you include Hugo in on those discussions, Jeff? Yep. Yeah, and and and, and I'm sure equipment that can be used uh, no matter where we go and when we go. Okay. All righty. Enough said on 11.4, uh, 12.5, 11.5, discussion on the 2020 graduation. Well, we beat this one up pretty good, but I just wanted to, uh, I guess at this point, we're just let you know that, well, a Angie, you want to talk about stuff that you're discussing? That'd be, probably be easier. She must have fallen asleep. Okay, are we on the graduation? Yeah. Um, so originally we would like to postpone graduation and have a traditional ceremony, but as the news from the governor and the MDE with health, it sounds like social distancing is still going to be in place for June and July, probably in August and maybe even into the beginning of the next school year. So my thought process has changed a little bit. 
thinking that we're probably not going to be able to have that traditional graduation ceremony. We're looking at a virtual ceremony uh, where we would have possibly like set up our gymnasium the way it always is, having students come in like 15 minute increments and then cap and gown with their family and friends of up to four, have them hear their name, get their name called, they get their, they receive their diploma. Um, and we'd hire a videographer to capture all of this and then uh, pre-record the speeches from the guest speaker to the two students that always speak at graduation, uh, pre-record those, have the videographer create a, a video of all of it. <clears throat> and then there was talk of on the graduation day, on uh, Friday, May 29th, having everybody in their vehicles go to the um, local Lutheran church, uh, United in Christ Lutheran, where they have a large screen. It's kind of like an outdoor drive-in event. They have a radio receiver, and we could play a video then of the from the video um, that night still. So that was one um, some ideas that we've been talking about. And we could still even do the parade through the towns as well, um, practicing social distancing. So those are just some thoughts that we're brainstorming right now. Just a question, Angie, because it's been it's been asked of me. Um, I would assume that, you, you know, the principals of each school district around here have been talking, but it sounds as though some of the local area schools are planning an actual graduation in their football fields on what was normally scheduled as their graduation date, and they're going to respect the social distancing six foot thing. I know we've talked before and there is concern about, um, you know, just, it's a group of more than 10 and currently we're supposed to only be with people in our household or whatever it is but um has there been talk about that i mean do you know uh, i heard mountain iron was doing a football field graduation and i also heard masabi east is doing a football field graduation i have not heard um of anybody doing that um but the smaller the school you are you could probably organize it. Like I could see MIB having that work where they could still um, practice the social distancing, have people spread out. Uh, Masabi East, I would think they have a larger graduating class. I don't know how they're uh, planning for that, but I haven't heard any discussion about it from any of the area principals. Because I would put I, you know, back you might on want discussion uh, back on for maybe after the governor gives his next order, maybe it opens it back up. Um, I, I heard that Masabi East, if they don't have it at the football field, they could, they're going to do it in the hockey arena. Yeah, that's what I heard too. I, there's, this isn't just a Edwards Gilbert or a St. Louis County problem. This is a nationwide problem. There should be millions of different reasons or uh, ideas or how we can get a, a ceremony done, I think. It's just not it's just not Edwards Gilbert. It's, it's nationwide. Yeah, correct. Yeah, and right, I mean, given the, the current rules, it, it's an assembly of no more than 10. So whether you have a graduating class of of 12 or or, or 80, it's still the same. Yeah. This just sucks. It does. <laughs> it, really, it's, it really does. It, I think, we, but we can but, all pile up to Walmart and Menards and Menards and, has been packed. I know. I mean, if you super one, I mean, that's that's more than a group of ten. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't quite, I don't quite get the. I mean, I understand the essential part of it, but if you're if you're going to have this in a ball field on a football field, practicing safe distance on the field and in the stands, I think we you could you could do it. I mean, I think you could pull this off. Yeah. Put the kids in the foot. Put the graduating seniors in the foot in the football stands. There's 70 kids. You got plenty of bleachers, and put the families spaced out on the football field all the way back to the baseball field if you have to. Yep. Well, and then you the town system. That, you got to create something. That's what we do. 
that's what we initially talked to um, Angie about this parent group that's formed. We initially talked to her about the, the football field and, and using the, um, you know, announcers booth up there for the kids that are, and adults that are doing speeches and things. So everybody could still hear it. Everybody can still be together. Cause I, you know, some of the things that I'm hearing from kids and not just my own, by the way, other kids is the things that are really bothering them are, are the fact that, you know, they can't be together when they graduate. They can't go back into the school, basically had two day warning and, and you know, they're poof, their senior year is gone. But, you know, the senior prank and all those kinds of things, you know. We don't miss that at all. Not at all. (laughs) But I mean, those are the things that the kids are missing and, and they really, from what I am hearing is they really wanted to be able to have that connection of being together. And that's one of the reasons why I think that whole, um, you know, slideshow sitting in their cars, listening to the slideshow being displayed on, on that local church is a great idea. It still gives them some, some kind of an opportunity to get together and, you know, still be the class of 2020 and not 70 individual kids. All right. Well, anyway, this is a work in progress. We'll see what the governor has to say this week, and that might change the outcome. Maybe not. But we'll uh, we'll keep we'll keep you in the loop. I mean, if there was if there was any sort of law that I mean, I hate to break a law, but there really is no law. It's, it's a recommendation to have no more than ten people. But if you had a graduation ceremony like Brandy said, and 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 you know, and you had this, I mean, I don't think I don't think the law enforcement would waste any resources trying to bust something up like that. I think it would be silly. It would be a waste, you know, that would be a definite waste of money. But we, if, we want to keep people safe too. And I, oh, and absolutely. I, that and I understand absolutely. that. And, and the idea that Angie has with doing the virtual part for the ceremony, um, I think is still, I think that's great and kind of meshing it together and, and having a video that can be played, um, with the senior slideshow and everything like that is still still a great idea. But I'm just, as far as the school districts around doing it in the football field, my, I'm just, you know, saying maybe Angie could connect with some of those principals and see if that's what they're actually doing. And if they did c- give consideration to that whole, you know, no more than 10 grouping, um, as part of the governor's orders, you know, just have a conversation with other districts and and seeing what their thoughts are on that. Maybe somebody checked out with the governor or governor's office to see if if that could be done. I don't know. Yeah, I should reach out to those principals and find out. All right, very good. Thank yeah, the whole distancing thing could change very soon. So. Okay, we're done talking eleven point five, correct? Yep. Okay, 12.0, there is no there is no old business. Uh, 13.0, administrative <coughs> report and information. Mr. Chair, <coughs> we had, I had added one more thing that's probably not on your list for whatever reason, but that's approving the first amendment to the agreement regarding school district property. If you uh, recall the last meeting, we had uh, Jackie and Dave from the city come up and they talked about... Um, the, the 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 previous agreement didn't start until we vacated our properties and we have properties that are for sale now and they wanted that that agreement just changes it so that that agreement takes place now while while we're while we have these buildings for sale and not like two years from now when we vacate just so you know it is yeah. what's that it is it is on board book, just so you know. Yes, it's under 12F. Okay. So Jeff, where are we sitting on that? With Where are we sitting on that sale or, or where, 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 what about the buyer, the potential buyer? He was told that we have a process that we have to go through um, and that likely if the board approves this that he's going to have to provide that information to us 
before we will agree to it. And what what was any comments back from him? I have not heard anything. Okay. All right. So I mean, if we had an offer on the building, and it was turned down because he couldn't show proof of whatever he was going to do with the building, does that put the Eveleth in the first right of refusal seat to buy that building for the amount offered? No, because we're not. That agreement doesn't take because this this amendment. That agreement isn't even in place yet, as of right now. Wasn't it May 1st of 2020 it would take place on those two buildings? The amendment to the agreement would, but prior to that, we weren't, that agreement didn't take place until we vacated the campus. So that agreement didn't, didn't have any effect on, on that first purchase agreement that was signed. So, if, 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 if I might so, just kind of take a stab at this, is I, I, I think that the when we had discussed and, and everyone seemed to be on board with giving the city a, a, a right of first refusal, um, it, it did not contemplate the two properties that we had listed. There you go. And this this basically changes that i i certainly believe it was my intent that the city would have some input particularly with the right of first refusal as to the sale of any of the properties including the old junior high and, and the tech building and i think this amendment just clarifies that that's the case in the original amendment or the original right of first refusal they contemplate that any of the properties would be available for at least two years and because of that the agreement the right of first refusal didn't start till the marketing period began which was i believe in 2022 when at that point we expected to be moving into the academy that is but, correct. But, but Matt, they sat in on those meetings knowing that those two buildings were up for sale. Why, I, what I don't understand is why they didn't want to include them at the time. But now we're including them at, at this time, those two buildings in the first right of refusal. I can't speak to that, but I, I think it was... I believe that the city's intent was always that they would have a right of first refusal on, on all the properties, including these two. Okay. And, 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 and certainly, I, I can say that, I mean, the many times that we've talked about this, there has been a consensus on the board, a consensus that we don't do anything regarding the sale of any of the properties without input and blessing of some sort of the city. Moving forward, yes, at this point. Well, I think, move, move, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking going back a year or more with our discussions. So I, my thought on this is, I'm not opposed to this in any such way. I mean, I think it makes sense. If we had all of that energy and put into our current buildings, why wouldn't we have that same expectation with the existing buildings that we're not using? So that makes sense to me. I think it just happened to be where we just missed the timing piece of it. So um, I'm fine with this amendment. I think it makes sense. And I looked at the things that are outlined, which is perfect because then we can use that at, to potential buyers to say these these things need to be met in your proposal in order for us to consider so at so at this point jeff are those two buildings still up for sale or we can't put them up for sale until after we vacate the high school no they're they're they for, si they're for, for sale, for sale and they can continue to be for sale what this amendment yeah. does is it gives the city the first right of refusal on those properties as well the original one did not start until after we vacated all of the property. Okay. And the first I, know, I, know, 
I was just going to say, I agree. I think that they should have the first right of refusal for those two buildings. But I, you know, if the buyer can provide that information to the city and the city, I, again, I, I agree with the amendment. I mean, I think that was all of ours, all of our atten- intention was to be able to give them the right first right of refusal. Okay. I agree to the amendment. Well, I- and, 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 and I think first the the buyer, I mean, we, we could be in a position where the buyer provides us the information and we're comfortable with them and what they're planning on doing and that they have the resources to pull it off. We can say, yeah, we agree with it. Then basically you put it to the city. Yeah. But I don't, I know I'm not there. So I know, I know Director Sorkin had mentioned a few times in regards to the the uh, national historic uh, building, the, the, the manual arts building is in the national historic registry of, of historic places, um, and I did look at that. Was confirmed back on eight of nineteen eighty. Somebody had filed uh, that that building was registered. Uh, what does what does that do for the sale of the building? Holly, I mean, you you wanted to have a discussion on this um, in regards to the manual arts, and I feel that the manual arts building, what what can you what you can't do, and with that building, can you? I mean, if the city takes it over, I mean, they would probably eventually tear it down. I would assume that they would if they want that whole piece of property. Well, first of all, I asked that you allow the um, person Uh from the state that I talked with to be part of this conversation. And you said, well, if there's time, you'd let her talk. So I'm not not the expert. She, there's very specific things you can and can't do with buildings. And I wanted her to answer any questions and give you people information. Can you call, can you? Okay. I was hoping we we could get it during the study session, but we went on and on and on during the study session over. I was hoping well, to get it. Well, Mr. Chair, either either way, this amendment that just gives the city, we're just looking to give them first route right refusal starting now. Yeah. I mean, we can right. deal with we can deal with can we or can't we at a later mm-hmm. date. Yes. And wouldn't the attorney? Wouldn't the school district attorney also be involved yes. in that conversation? Thank you. Yeah. Bill, when you you just made a comment thinking that um, that the city, if they bought it first wave refusal and purchased it that you assume that they would demolish demolish it well i don't know i didn't say that i'm using what are the i mean wasn't that building slated the tore down like four years ago because it was falling over it no, no, was that, tuck pointed there was gutted about heat system no 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 hold on I'm i mean just, i'm just asking a question because in the in the agreement this is the amendment, but in the agreement on uh, number three, it says in the event that our school district does not convey the property to a third party during the marketing period, which now we're proposing to change the marketing period from uh, May 5th of this year to two years after we vacate, right? It says um, ISD 242154 agrees that it will demolish the existing buildings and improvements on the property at its sole cost. So, and then so we are being in this agreement to demolish it at our cost. Mm-hmm. And that is I correct. That. That's I, correct. I don't agree with that because um, we would we would then have the cost of demolishing it, and then they were would be able to buy at market value cleared land at market value, which is going to be lot less you know than anything with buildings and shoot if they want to buy it, they have to pay for demolition so i think we need to review this in light of that and then the other question i had was um on the amendment number two i understand that changing the period of the effective marketing period to include these two buildings that are now sale. but the criteria that the city would use to determine whether they thought it was viable or they put their stamp of approval on it or whatever, A through F. Um, so what if they 
What if the city says, no, we don't like this project? And so they have, no matter what the project is, they have a right to say, no, we don't want it, or we don't think it's good, therefore you can't sell it to these people. Therefore, then this kicks in. Number three, we didn't sell it to anybody because they said they have the right of first refusal. Then we have to demolish it. Then they get to buy it. No, that, it, value. the first right of refusal means that if they, yeah. if we get an offer on that property, say it's for two dollars, and the city doesn't like it, the city would have to pay us two dollars, and we're off the hook. We don't demolish it anymore. Mm -hmm. It's their exactly. property. Whether it's right. two dollars million dollars I do understand that but it's just well right by this we're just agreeing to do what we've always said we're gonna do we have the money in the budgets to demolish the properties we're trying to market the properties number one we have the right to sell the properties to anyone we want for any purpose I think it's it's incumbent upon us to make sure that anyone who we would enter into a, uh, a purchase agreement with, that we look at it and we think hard about it. And if we say, yes, we're going to sell this building to this, what, whoever that entity is, for whether it's $2 or whether it's $2 million, then if it's two dollars, the city can buy it from us for 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 two dollars, and then it's completely up to them to do what they want with that property. Mm -hmm. If it's two million dollars, it costs them a little bit more, and if they say no, then we sell it to whoever we agree to sell it to, and they do whatever they want with the thing. But the bottom line is, we've given the city the option to protect some very important land in the city. But if you but if you think that we're going to demolish all these buildings and save what the city wants and then turn around and sell it to them for forty thousand dollars, it's going to be. If you look at there, it's fair market value. What is that piece of property worth? And the appraiser will decide that at the time that we right. sell it to the city. Right. Correct. For no less and no more. Right. They said forty thousand dollars. We negotiated that out of there. Right. It's fair market value. What is that property worth? Well, well, that'll be determined at the time. Correct. And what if, we, what if we have no buy? What if we it's have already no been, It's already been talked about. This is just an amendment to, to speed up the thing on the two buildings. I, I'll make a motion right. to approve the amendment. Let's, let's move on. Right. I understand it. That amendment, that this amendment has, goes back to the original purchase agreement. I mean, the, um, um, the property agreement. Question. I think we have what? a motion on the floor. And uh, now we, I'm just going to say, but it's not on the agenda to approve anything. Yes, it is. You know, we're, it is. Yes, it, it is. It's on board. It is. Right. Okay. Are we in discussion yet? Uh, yes. Okay. I'm just saying this amendment has a relationship to the main agreement regarding school district property about their uh, first right of refusal. Question, what happens if we don't get anybody who wants it? We don't get any offers. The city then does not have to buy it if they have the first right of refusal. Then what happens? We have to demolish it. and Then we tear them down like we have money in the budget for and we've always contemplated. Okay, then the district yeah. tear it down and then the, then the city gets to buy, um, uh, purchase it for the market price. Yep. And under yeah. that scenario. So that's what we've what contemplated. The, that's what we've contemplated from day one. Okay. Correct. One of the commitments that we made is that we were not going to be having large buildings that were going to stand vacant for twenty years in a oh, community not, that wasn't cared about. So that was the point that we put. I mean, that's not even my argument. You know, that's not even my point, Kelly. It's just the it's just the language and the what ifs. I, it doesn't matter about what you're saying there. I, I, I told what I'm saying. If it doesn't. Sell, and we don't have a we don't have a buyer, then we don't have a buyer, and we can't make it happen. But to then prolong we, marketing because that we no. don't want to have to pay the expense. Look, can I, let me finish, please. It's really hard when people interrupt on the Zoom meetings. But if we don't have a if we don't have a buyer, we don't have a buyer. We cannot extend the marketing period 
to try to find a buyer. It is also not Eblet's fault that we don't have a buyer for one of our properties down the road. Therefore, why would they have to de demolish it in order to not have a big old eyesore 20, 30 years down the road in their community or in Gilbert? That is the reason. And so if, if it happens where we're not buyer for any of the properties ever, and we have to demo them because that is what our agreement says, and then this, and then Ellis gets to purchase their land, Gilbert gets to purchase theirs, so be it. But we're Are following you? the commitment and what we had said. And, you know, if we have buyers that are able to repurpose it, great. Of course we would love that. But Steven, there are what ifs. At, I mean, at, that, at that point, Kelly, you got that piece of land. Now that vacant piece of land is going to go up for sale for a period of time. We're just, like I said, if the city has an offer, has a chance to buy it. If someone wants to buy it for a dog park, they can buy it for a dog park. They can, I mean, that piece of property is going to go up for sale at fair market value. We're just not going to turn it over to the city after we spend thousands of dollars to thousands of dollars, millions of dollars just demoing the building and just to hand it over to the city. I think that's ridiculous. I think you need to read number three better because it goes on to say demolition shall occur no later than December of 2025. The city may opt to retain a portion or portions of it for improvements. So they can tell us what to demolish and what they want to keep. And and I say, I say if they want it, if nobody buys it, then they should pay for demolition. So, so we got a motion on the floor. Approved. I don't have that in front of me. You're approving. Like, you're approving the amendment for the, for the right. regarding the school district vote. properties. Okay, so we have motion on the floor by Yuhan, Director Yuhan. Do we have a second to approve yes. the? Okay. I the second. Okay. Any more discussion? Well, wasn't there budget for uh, demolition? Wasn't that? A figure come out of about five million dollars, and we're looking at all these buildings for both campuses. Seven million between all of them, or something. Yes. Between the whole, the whole district. <laughs> yes, my my recollection is that was insisted upon um, by the, the the commissioner um, to to get his support for the um, 4.9 million a year to um, offset the bond payments. You are the correct. Commissioner of the at my I triple RB. <clears throat> these these yep. bullets gonna come down very easy. So have you ever anybody ever checked in to see just take one building for an example and say, hey what would it cost to demolish this building? I think that that was already done, Tom. That was already in the they figured out the cost for the tipping fee and salvage fee and all that other stuff. I do believe that was in the cost. Yep. So what is the cost of the whole Evelyn campus and then the manual arts and then the old junior high for demolition? What was that number? I don't remember off the top of my head. It's uh, significant though. It's I thought it was like 7 point something with all the campuses, including Virginia. It is. Well, it's 7.2 with everything. All, all demo was 7.2 yep. million. But that's... Okay. That's trucking it out. I mean, that's not, that's worst case scenario. Right. And Matt, could, Matt, could you repeat? I didn't hear you. What did you say about the 4.9 million and the commissioner? Is that IRRRB? What did you say about that? Yeah, that, that was the, 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 the agency payment on, on the bonding. When that was discussed, what the agency might be willing to support, um, my understanding, not being in those d discussions, was that um, that the, the the commissioner needed or was uh, wanted to. He got a commitment that there'd be money in the budget to demo to demolish properties that weren't going to be used for future educational purposes by the schools. Is that correct? You are you are correct. Is that the I triple R budget or our budget? Or the bonding budget. The bonding budget. Oh, you're talking or about the, 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 the construction, the, the money to build the new schools includes demolition money for 
all of the old schools under the assumption that all of the old schools, none of the old buildings will be able to be repurposed. And if any of the buildings are able to be repurposed, then we'll save money on the demolition budget. Okay, you were talking about the Commission of Education, not the Commissioner of IRRRB. Commissioner of IRRRB. Okay, any more discussion on that? Okay, can I roll get call. roll call vote, please? And what we what we are approving, Jeff? What you are approving is I don't have. <coughs> you're you're approving an amendment. Yep. Regarding school district property that will allow the city to have the first right of refusal starting now rather than two years from now. Okay. Roll call, Director okay. General. Can you say that again, Kelly? You broke up a little bit. So, calling for roll call, Director Genellini. No. Director Yuhan. Yes. Director Schulberg. Yes. Director Lodiger. Yes. Director Say there's a yes. Director Addy. Yes. And Director Sorkin. No. Twelve point six is six is approved. Okay, and then there was a wasn't there another one, Jeff? Too? No, we we another put that at eleven point. We put that at eleven point four. We're we're over that. That was the Hugo thing. Okay, alrighty. Uh, we're at, so I got thirteen point zero. The administrative report. Um, I've said enough tonight, um, but I will. Okay. If Todd and Angie have anything to add, go ahead. Can I just throw in a comment here? Because I. I I gave forewarning that I need to leave at 7.30. There is a, an event that's going on for, for kids, and I would really like to be there to show my support. The, I, you know, the football field has been lit um, for the class of 2020. The softball field is going to be lit today, um, and I, I am going to be there. So if, if you don't mind, um, Chair Addy, can I just skip to the board board member topics for one second and just okay. well, that is me. I just wanted to make a comment to that um, you know I want to I want to thank everybody that has stepped up to help out to recognize these you know young ladies and young men for the class of 2020 um, whether they've stepped up with planning or stepped up financially with donations, our community has really come together for these for these kids, and I greatly appreciate it as a parent of a, as a class of twenty twenty student. So, um, thank you. All right, hey, Brandy. Thank you, Brandy. And, that, and at that, let the record reflect that Director Lodiger has left the meeting at 7.30. Okay, you go. Okay, uh, board member topics. Uh, I have oh. nothing. Should we do Todd and Angie? Yes. I have nothing to add. Nothing okay. to add? I will... Uh, uh, add something real quick here just for the district we um, got a free subscription to something called teachers pay teachers um, and pulling out this week and there's lots of resources available for teachers that are normally uh, cost money and we'll be getting them for free that's all i have thank you okay i should add to yeah. mr chair that we're we're serving about 180 breakfast and lunch so just so you know. All right. All right. Uh, Director Sarkin. Have no, anything? No. Nothing, no. Director Duhon. Nothing tonight. Director Schober. I'll just. Just a real, uh, real weird time, and we're going to get through it together. Yep. Uh, Director Jalini. Nothing. <clears throat> Director Sather. 
I just want to do a huge shout out to everyone. The creativity. I'm not a very creative person, but when people are really creative, I can, my mind gets blown easily. But I think with hearing suggestions and ideas for honoring our graduating class this year is, is just wonderful and just be need and all the ideas that people come up with. I also am need to say how how impressed I am with our teachers and the faculty and um, what Debbie is doing. Every time I have to go in there and sign paperwork, I see her and Stacy buried in balance and everything else, and they're just working so hard. And then our teachers, who would have thought how you're going to educate for physical education remotely like this? But it's impressive. My daughter's learning about every single sport, and um, it's just been really neat to see how people are just coming up with the great ideas to to teach in a way that that people have not been used to. And I think for the students to be learning in a way that they have not normally been accustomed to. So, bravo to everyone. All right. I, I agree with you, Kelly. Ditto, ditto. Everybody's working hard. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. You said it well. All righty. On that, uh, 15.0, can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll move. Second. By Director Second by Director Sarkin? Yeah. All righty, this meeting is adjourned. Have a good evening, folks. See you guys. Bye, everyone.